Can Global Warrants Yellowstone's Iconic Geyser? Steamboat geyser spray slowly fossilizes the trees where it landed, preserving the geyser's past and providing a glimpse into Steamboat's uncertain future. A recent study revealed that Yellowstone's famous Steamboat geyser has suffered a decades-long drought caused by by a history of drought, a new study finds. As global temperatures continue to increase, forecasts predict the American West will become increasingly arid. Continuing drought in this area could slow, and potentially even stop. Yellowstone National Park's famous geyser eruptions, according to the study researchers. Even small changes in precipitation can influence the interval between eruptions, explained Shaul Hurwitz, a hydrologist at the United States Geological Survey, USGS, who led the study. So more water means more frequent eruptions, whereas less water means less frequent eruptions. Geysers require very specific conditions to form, including a water source, heat supply, and proper geological piping. Environmental conditions such as drought can throw off that balance and cause geysers to become inactive. The new study, published in Geochemistry, Geophysics, Geosystems, an AGU journal covering research on the chemistry, physics, geology, and biology of Earth and planetary processes, used wood partially mineralized by Steamboat Geyser to reconstruct its dormant period and determine its past. What causes geyser dry spells? The Steamboat the world's tallest active geyser, can shoot water about 115 meters 377 feet, into the air for 90 minutes at a time. Unlike the park's old faithful geyser, Steamboat doesn't erupt on a predictable schedule, with eruption intervals ranging from as little as 3 days to 50 years, according to the USGS. Now, researchers want to understand why geyser activity has increased and decreased over the centuries. When steamboat erupts, geyser hot jets of water coat nearby trees with silica, a mineral that can prevent decomposition. This silica mist slowly covered the trees, eventually killing them while preserving their wooden structure. As a result, dead trees surrounding geysers can survive for centuries longer than normal, making them a useful tool for studying geyser history. In Yellowstone, you rarely find wood, even dead wood, that is more than 300 years old because fungi and other bacteria break it down, says Hurwitz. Silica basically protects trees from fungus. For us, this is an advantage because if it wasn't for silization, we wouldn't have had any trees until now. Lodgepole pines make up almost all of Yellowstone's forest. However, they have an average lifespan of only 150 to 200 years. Hurwitz and his team took advantage of this preservation process and collected samples of silicate wood from as little as 14 meters 46 feet, from the geyser vent. Through radiocarbon dating, they found that the tree samples clustered around three time periods, the late 15th century, mid-17th century, and late 18th century. The water that shoots up from the geysers is rich in silica, and when the silica precipitates, it clogs up the pathways that allow trees to breathe, photosynthesize, and grow, explains Hurwitz. For us, this shows that when trees grow right near the mounds, no eruptions will occur. Hurwitz and his team matched three periods of tree growth around the geyser with regional climate records and found that the drought happened at the same time as the trees were growing. These environmental conditions likely reduced the local water supply, 
preventing steamboat from erupting and allowing trees to grow, but the geysers were not dormant for long. In the case of steamboat, we found no silicious wood tree remains with more than 10 or 20 annual rings, which suggests to us that trees never grew large in the area, said Hurwitz. So there's no long period of decades or centuries of sustained growth. But with rising global temperatures, a prolonged drought in the American West could further reduce Yellowstone's geyser activity. Very different in terms of the interval between eruptions, they erupt less often, and some of them may even go extinct, said Hurwitz.